Howdy and welcome to the Bender Bunker, where we're going to take a little trip to the bayou today. That was, of course, the main chords for the Birds Classic that featured Clarence White back in the day, Lover of the Bayou. Now, when I first started this channel, a Bee Bender focused channel, I knew there'd always be two Bee Bender elephants in the room that Sunday I'd have to address. One was the big bang of Bee Bender, Clarence White, and of course, the current torchbearer of uh, Clarence's guitar and Bee Bending in general, in my opinion, Marty Stewart. Now, how to approach those two elephants has always been a little bit daunting to me. I figured it's something I'd warm up to, so here we are today. And since we don't do a lot of note-by-note -note transcriptions, that's just not uh, what floats the bender boat around here. Nothing wrong with it. It's just not what we do. I had to find an angle, and my angle was just listening to the Lover of the Bayou song the other day and, and realizing, well, that is actually one of my favorite bird songs featuring Clarence, and it's going to be a fun one to play over and go over some bender licks in the style of one Mr. Clarence White, or as best I can do it. Uh, a couple of nice things about it. What you heard there is what I'm introducing in this lesson is small, medium, and large. Now, what we did is we just kind of started by vamping the chord. So we just kind of vamped the chords with the bender. Then the second thing we did introduces a shape I'm excited about. It's one I wish I'd included in my original Unlocking the Twang Box video because it's a primary twang box shape you can always use when you're using minor chords, which, of course, this is based in A minor. So this is going to be a fun shape to have in your arsenal because it works in any minor key. And then finally, I just went nuts at the end, and it's a cavalcade of bending, and that's your large part. So small, medium, and large, you can work your way up, takes bits and pieces, mix them together. Remember, you're only limited by your imagination. So that's where we're heading today. You and me, if you want, go grab the bender, because we're heading down to the bayou, and I will uh, see you on the other side of the fade. Well, perfect, you decided to take a trip down to the bayou with me. As we do the Clarence White style Lover of the Bayou B Bender lesson, we're going to the small, medium, and large sections of the lesson as promised. So we're going to start with the small section and take it from there. The small section is just basically vamping the chords of the song with a little bit of bender thrown in, and the chords are A minor, G, F, back to A minor. That's it. So what we're going to do is I'm going to move up close as always for the hot fretboard action. And we're going to start by making your Old friend, the A minor chord, just a regular A minor chord, okay? And then once you got that, we're going to downstroke the A minor chord and employ the bender fully and hold it there. Okay? So now we're going to hit the high E string, the B string that's already bent, letting it down, and then the G string that's still in the shape, the A minor. That's it. Now, we're going to switch over to our second chord, which is the G. Now, in this case, when I say G, there's one extra little wrinkle. I know a lot of us uh, players do this, is I've got my middle, or excuse me, my ring finger on the B string on the third fret. So the top two on the third are covered for this style G chord, which we'll need for this lick that sounds like. So again, what we did with the last chord we're doing with this one, we're making the chord, we're downstroking it, and we're hitting the bender as we downstroke it, and we're holding the bender there, and then we're working off the high E string to come back. So it's down, bent, and then once you've got that, you come back, you hit your high E string, which in this case is still being held by your little finger on the third, and then you're going to hit the high E string again once you take the uh, little finger off where it's going to be open. So it's... Then you hit the still bent B, letting it down. Now it's time to go to the F. We're just making a traditional uh, F chord here. So index finger on the top two strings on the first, and then you got your middle finger on the uh, G string of the second, and your ring finger falls into the third to make that F chord. But what we're also adding now to make this lick work, put your little finger on the third fret of the B string. Okay, so now that we have this shape ready to go, same kind of mentality as the last two. Downstroke the chord, Hit the bender at the same time, hold it there. All right, so it's downstroking this chord with the bender being held, hitting the top string, still being in the chord shape, hitting the bent B string, still bent B, letting it down, hitting the third string, your G string, still in the shape of the F chord, and then taking your finger off and hitting that third string open. back to the A minor chord and just give it a quick up and down. All right. So in context of uh, more or less the rhythm, it's going to sound like this. Two, three, four. All right, my 
friends, that is the small portion of the Lover of the Bayou lesson. To make sure we can get through this lesson quickly and not take too much time, I'm going to edit out and come back on the fade with the medium portion. Stand by. All right, let's get on to the medium portion of this lesson. It sounds like this. <laughs> And it's going to start us by introducing us to a primary twain box shape I wish I'd covered in unlocking the twain box, but didn't get to. And it's one that's appropriate for a minor chord. So this being in A minor, we get to learn it now. All right. So to learn it, let's go ahead and visualize. You know, we just got a regular A minor bar chord up here. Well, let's go ahead and make that a major chord real quick. And what we did learn in the twain box is one of the things we can do quickly to bend an A is we come up here for this D shape. And we were using that for like the Mooney lesson. Well, this minor is just the shape I'm about to show you. It's just a slight, slight variation on that that we already know. Just take your high E string down one. Now it sounds like this, which is appropriate for A minor. That's a great primary twain box shape for any any place you want to be on the neck in a minor key. You just hit that minor bar chord and you can find it right up there, sitting right above it. So in this case, we're using that minor shape. The next shape we're going to use is one we've already covered, which again is that primary major chord shape. We go down to this D chord shape for the G, two more down for the F, and then back for the A minor. So what we're about to learn is based out of those primary bender chord shapes. So the first part, let's learn that, which is... All right, so let's make that, that minor chord shape, and we do that again by putting our third string is going to have our middle finger on the ninth, then our ring finger goes on the B string on the tenth, and our index finger rests on the high E on the eighth. So we're going 10, 9, 8. Which sounds like Moonlight Sonata. Okay. So the lick there, once, so go ahead and make that shape because that's how we're going to start this lick. And you're going to go with your third string and down pick all three while hitting the bitter. And once you've got it down there, put your little finger on the high E on the tenth. And then come back to the still bent B. And then let your little finger off so the index finger's on the high E. Hit the bent B, but do this. And back up. So it's this. And they're doing the high E again with the 10th on the little finger. Bent B. Same as before. Hitting the, the B and letting it down. And then we're actually ending with the G string still being held by our middle finger there on the 9th. So it sounds... Alright, that's how we're starting this medium party. Now we're coming down here, and we are actually are going to be using that D chord shape there for the G major. So put your middle finger on the B string on the, uh, what is that, the eighth, and then your index finger on the seventh on the high E, because this part is... So that's real easy. So we're just hitting the, we've got our middle finger there anchored on the B string on the eighth. We're going to hit it and hit the bender. And we've already got our index finger on the high E on the seventh. We're going to alternate... And then we switch our index finger over to the seventh on the third string. All right, so together. And then this last part, we're coming down again, working out of that D chord major shape for the F. So go ahead like you did before and put your middle finger on the B string on the 6th and then have your high E above it on the 5th of the high E. But this time we're going to be incorporating our little finger here on the high E on the 8th as well. And this is what this is going to sound like. Okay. So we're going to start by hitting the B string that we have held with our middle finger there on the 6th and holding the bend. Then the little finger goes up to the 8th. Back to the bent. And then the index finger on the fifth. So that's the first part. 
And then we're gonna alternate between that high E and the B string with the fingers still in position. So that's the next part. And then like we did before, we're switching our index finger over to the G string on the fifth for that last note. And then we're actually hitting the G string open, as you'll hear in a second. So all together. And then we're quickly going down here and making the beginnings of an A minor chord with, with your index finger there. Because remember, we've got that open G string ringing out from that last section. And then we're hitting this. All I'm doing there is just doing the first two parts of an A minor chord. So my index finger's on the first fret second and my middle finger's on the G string third. Okay, so all together. friend is the medium section so definitely uh, get ready for the large that's coming up next we got all kinds of bending ahead of us but we've already knocked out small medium so let's go on to large see you on the fade all right let's finish the job and climb to the peak of Bender Mountain here with the large portion of the Clarence White style lesson to refresh your memory this is what we'll be shooting for <laughs> So let's get right to it. I'm going to do my best for you here. The first part we're going to learn is this. And what that is, is we're starting on the G string with our middle finger. We're sliding up. Then we're going to be sliding up to the ninth, and then our index finger on the B string on the eighth. And then we're going to alternate the two. And then we quickly go with our middle finger on the B string on the tenth and our ring finger on the high E on the 10th. So we're doing this part. So we hit the B string there on the 10th, hit the bender, high E on the 10th, bend, go down with our index finger to the, uh, what is that, the 8th, back to the bend B, letting it down. So that's the first part. And here's how we get to the next part. Very much what we just did, just a different part of the neck. So as we come out of here, we're coming down on the benders, how we're ending that first part. Going back up, and we're going to put on the B string, we're going to put our middle finger on the 15th and our ring finger on the high E of the 15th, because we're going to do something very similar to what we did. But remember, we finished this first part coming down on the bender. As we come up on that B string to get our middle finger on the 15th, we're going to be fully bent when we hit that note. So we've got it fully bent. We're hitting the high E on the 15th. Bent, B. Then our index finger on the 13th. Bent, B down and their index finger switched over to the B string on the 13th. Okay, so all together. All right, the next part's gonna be this. actually reminds me the most of any uh, what I've taken from Clarence's playing than any part of the lesson because it's a very quick implied just slight bender he tends he tended to do a lot of already have it bent bring it back down that's sort of something I noticed he did and I kind of borrowed but uh, this lick is which again is gonna be working out of that D chord shape we were using for our G and then our F we're just getting to it differently so this part is uh, basically we're coming up on the B string to the 10th fret with our ring finger and then our little fingers following in on the 10th fret on the high E. 
So as we come, slide wherever you want, but slide into it a little bit. So as you come into it, the bender goes fully employed, right? And then we're hitting the high E and the 10th. We're not coming back to the bent B so much as using it as a dead note. And then index finger goes down to the high E on the, uh, what is that, seven. And the bender's still bent, and the middle finger's dropping down there on the eighth. We're making that D chord shape. Down, and then index finger goes over to end it on the third string on the seventh on the G. Now it is important to get that dead note in there to give you the rhythm. Now the next part is very similar to what we just did to at least start with. We're taking that D shape for G and we're gonna work down two for F and it's gonna So it's basically the same as what we did using your ring finger and your little finger. This time they're sliding up to the B string and the high E string on the eighth. Bender, high E, dead, and then index finger coming over to the fifth high E. Bender still bent. Little finger on the six. That's where we're going next. So we go. And then we're coming down here and we're making this shape. We're on the third fret top two strings. I've got my middle finger on the B and my ring finger on the high E. The bender's bent. I'm starting with the high E on the third. Index finger on the high E first. Back to the bed B down. Right there, right? Next thing I'm doing. So that's the B string on the first fret open and then index finger hitting the first and then hitting it open again. Roll actually rolling off of it. And then my middle finger's making the second fret on the G string. And then the index finger goes back down to make that first part of the A minor chord. best I can teach it. There's a whole lot of bending going on there. Perhaps too much. I need to make these lessons simpler for my sake. Okay, here we go from the top of the grande. Two, three, four. large portion of the small, medium, large of the Clarence White style B bender lesson. So what I'm going to do now is a quick fade in and fade out. I'm going to bring the rhythm track back in because I don't have it set up right now. We're going to play all three parts together in context and go ahead and get on out of here. So I'll be right back. All right, let's put all the pieces together that make up the Clarence White style B bender lesson video, the small, medium, and large. We'll kick the backing track back in and put them all together. Uh, again, I, it's one of the more complex lessons I've tried to put together. I figured it had to be if I'm going to put the name Clarence White anywhere in the title. So a lot in there. If I wasn't clear on a few parts, go ahead and get the time signature of the video of the piece you might be confused on. Put it in the comment sections with your question, and I'll try and get back to you with any kind of answers I can because we are a full-service bunker around here. Um, if you enjoyed any parts of this, give it a like. If you've got any other Bender Buddies or Clarence White fans, share this with them if you would. And I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, go ahead and let's finish this before we kick in and get out of here with the uh, Bender Bunker official motto. Say it with me if you will. It is never too late to go on a bender. I'm definitely going to enjoy a spirited libation after this one. Hope you do as well. So let's go ahead and get on out of here. Two, three, four. Two, three, four.